Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christina Cope. I am the proud principal of Fifth Avenue Primary School. We have with us here today our incredible teaching and administrative staff at Fifth Avenue, and I'd like to introduce them to you now. We have our incredible assistant principal, Mrs. Elizabeth Tejada. Hello, everyone. So great to see you. Can't wait to meet you. Mrs. Linda Rilke. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to Fifth Avenue. Uh, looking forward to meeting you all. Nice to see some of your faces. Mrs. Barca. Hi, I'm Mrs. Barca. Welcome to Fifth Avenue School. Mrs. Cheney. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fifth Avenue. I'm Mrs. Cheney. Mrs. Davenport. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Fifth Avenue. Senora Oropisa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fifth Avenue. Mrs. Mott. Hi, everybody. I'm Mrs. Mott. I'm so excited to see all these faces coming here to Fifth Avenue School. Welcome. And Mrs. Lentini. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fifth Avenue School. I'm Mrs. Lentini. Okay. I'm going to, at this time, move to present the screen that I have so I will be able to show you our incredible presentation. Again, if you have any questions during the presentation, I would ask that you please type them into the chat. Mrs. Tejada will be viewing that chat. And at the end of our conversation, she will be able to facilitate a conversation with me after all of the questions. Okay. Could I just ask one of my teachers to verify that you are able to see the presentation on the home screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So in addition to our incredible teaching staff who you just met, we do have uh, a number of other professionals who will be working with your children during their time here at Fifth Avenue School. We have our nurse, Mrs. Wolford, our incredible secretaries, Mrs. Scala and Mrs. Barnes, our security guard, Mr. Chapman, our school psychologist, Mrs. Frimmer, our social worker, Ms. Salters, our ENL teachers, Mrs. Fridas and Ms. Mercado, our occupational therapist, Mrs. Yule, our speech and language teacher, Mrs. Barameo, and our incredible custodial staff, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Kevin. At this time, I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. Cheney, who is going to talk to you a little bit about a sample day in kindergarten at Fifth Avenue School. Hi, my name is Mrs. Cheney, and I'm going to take you through the life of a kindergartner at Fifth Avenue School. So on the screen, you see a sample day. Of course, the times and schedule will vary from class to class. Around 8.45 is when the children start to fill the hallways of Fifth Avenue with laughter and excitement as they enter their kindergarten classrooms, which are all located on the first floor. Um, once they arrive, they have a lot of responsibilities, such as emptying out their backpack, handing in their homework folder, ordering lunch on the lunch board, and then taking their assignment for the morning to work on quietly at their tables while we wait for everybody to arrive to the classroom. Then around 9.20, we are ready, ready to gather on the carpet for our morning meeting where we go over the calendar, we sing all our morning songs, we go through our name chart each day saying good morning to each other, and then discuss the topics that we will be covering for that day. Um, then we would get into reading workshop after that where we would have uh, independent learning centers and guided reading groups. After that would be snack. We all have snack in the morning. We encourage you to send in a healthy snack and drink and please place it in a separate labeled um, bag so it's easy for them to put into their snack basket. Um, also, they also don't know which is snack at, and or lunch in the beginning of the year. It's a little tricky. We say it's snack time and they start taking out their lunch box and eating their sandwiches. <laughs> so just makes it easier for all of us. Um, then we have specials which also, I said, will vary by class, which special you have, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon. On the next slide, I'll go over the special areas. Um, we have split gym uh, certain times during the week where this provides small group instruction because half the class goes to gym while half the class stays in the classroom for either guided reading groups or small math, math activities. Then we would get into whole group math after that, followed by lunch and recess and the children go to lunch and recess for 40 minutes where it's only the kindergartners in the cafeteria. 
and then they would go outside on the playground we have or in the classroom if the weather is bad for that day where they have plenty to choose from to play with. Following that, when they come back from recess, we have a few minutes to just settle in, just rest, use the bathroom. We do have a bathroom in the classroom, which is important for the kindergartners. They don't have to leave the classroom. And then we would get into writing workshop or word study, followed by science and social studies lessons, which each of the teachers are going to go into more detail with. And then dis dismissal time around 2.40. Now on the following slide, I will talk about special areas your child will be participating in. They have library once a week with Mr. Powers where they are able to take out a library book. He spends time in the beginning of the year just teaching them how to take care of books and being responsible. Then they have computers where we have brand new Chromebooks in the computer lab where each child has their own computer to work on and to just build, build on the skills that they have been working on in the classroom. Then they have art once a week with Mr. Kennedy, music once a week with Mrs. Bertolino, and physical education again every day. And so we do request that they wear sneakers to school every day for safety since there is gym every day and they also go on the playground at recess. So it's just easier that way to send them into school with sneakers. Now we will listen to Mrs. Lentini as she goes over our literacy program. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Lentini and I'm going to tell you about Literacy Collaborative, which is our framework for teaching reading and writing. So Literacy Collaborative allows for us to differentiate our instruction through whole group, small group, and individualized instruction. It provides a balance of teacher-directed instruction and then inquiry learning through centers. So there are three components of Literacy Collaborative. Um, the three components take about 120 minutes each day. So the children are really immersed in literacy for most of their academic day. The first component, as you can see on the slide, is word study and phonics. And that includes our alphabet linking chart that we chant every morning together, our letter of the week. As a grade level, we study a letter of the week. We brainstorm words that start with that letter. We review the sounds that it makes. And we also have sight words, or star words, we like to call them, of the week. So that's our word study in phonics. The second component of Literacy Collaborative is our reading workshop. So that includes our daily read-alouds, our shared reading, our guided reading and independent learning centers that I'll explain a little bit more in the next few slides. Um, and our third component is our writing workshop that includes interactive writing, shared writing, and independent writing. So our word study in phonics is very much hands-on. We have a skill every week um, and we do the skill together on the rug and then the children will go back in small groups and you can see in the pictures they're working on building at words. So our sight word, uh, our, our focus of that week was short A. So the children went back and used mag magnetic letters to build their own at words. Um, so phonics is very much hands-on. The next component of LC is our reading workshop. And that's on the next slide. Um, so during reading workshop, uh, we, that includes our read alouds, like we said uh, before, but it also includes guided reading. So you can see in the top left-hand corner is a picture of a teacher teaching guided reading. So that's the time when we, uh, as the teacher, take small groups, depending on your child's strengths and needs as a, as a literacy learner, as a reader, and we work with our small group reading. Um, during that time, the other children are actually independently going through their own independent learning centers. They follow a work board and they are independent. So um, they go to centers like you can see on the pictures, uh, the writing center is the bottom left um, picture. They'll read through a big book with a partner. They'll read around the room with pointers. They have other hands on letter uh, and sound activities like in that last picture. So very much hands on and they, they do learn to become independent very quickly in the year and follow their assignments. Um, and those assignments are very hands-on and inquiry-based. So they're learning a lot while they're independent. And our third component is writing workshop. And we typically begin with a mini lesson on the rug or a shared writing together where we share the pen. Um, the teacher will start writing and the children will come back and help her, whether it's for a letter or a word. Um, and then the children will go back and independently write at their seats. There's a picture of our daily journal in um, on the slide where the children are independently writing. We also start uh, writing books uh, come mid-year. The children are actually independently writing their own books. They're become their authors from the second they start kindergarten. Um, so we have a lot of a lot of literacy to share uh, with your child in kindergarten. Very excited to start that. And now I'm going to introduce Mrs. Rilke to talk about math.
Mrs. Rilke, you're muted. I'm not, okay, there I go. Oh, see, this is what we're learning this year, a lot of technological issues. I don't know what just happened, but uh, I'm Mrs. Rilke, and I'm here to talk about um, our mathematics program, which is probably the second biggest chunk of our day. Um, we use a program that's called Math and Focus. It is a Singapore math program. Um, and it's a program that really recognizes the fact that children need to, to play and, and manipulate things to build on their um, knowledge of mathematics. And um, it really works well with that. Um, you can see some of the kids working there. But the next, uh, we also have a program called iReady which is our computer program that we use for mathematics. And I know that Mrs. Cheney mentioned that the children go down to the computer lab a couple days a week and they'll be working with this um, in, and that goes along with our math and focus program. Um, the next slide talks a little bit more about how math and focus is aligned with our common core. Um, and we really work with fewer topics and delve in deeper. So children get a really good base before they move forward um, in, you know, the first and second grade. Um, so we work with the concrete and the visual where the children are working with manipulatives. They might be using buttons or cubes and things just to discover numbers. Um, a pictorial representation where they're drawing and we're showing them pictures. And then finally, abstract, which is actually just the, the numbers or the actual numerals. Um, the math program has a big book that we use with the children that um, they can follow along. We use our smart boards in this as well. Um, the children have their own student books. And um, we apply what we learn in the student books after doing a lot of exploration and work with the manipulatives. Uh, the next slide shows some pictures of our former students um, um, working in the different areas. So the top three pictures show the students working in, in concrete ways. So they're working with manipulatives, they're working, you know, show, representing numbers. Um, and we do a lot of this in centers, even at times while the kids were being guided reading, they may, may be doing some math as well. And that's where we hit them with the concrete. We start full group, working with them, and then they work on their own. The pictorial are the bottom two pictures where, you, you know, you see an example of kids showing three plus two with squares and circles. And the second one is actually where the children are showing different ways to make a five with the blue and yellow squares. Um, the last thing would be the abstract where you just see numbers. And for kids, that's tricky. So that's what we do everything before. Two plus two equals four. As, as adults, we can kind of see that, but kids need to visualize that. Um, in the next slide, um, talk about some things that we really use a lot in our math program um, at Fifth Avenue. So we do use our fingers, um, and we use our fingers in different ways to show combinations, combinations to make up five, combinations to make up 10. Um, and we're using our fingers also as we learn uh, beginning addition and subtraction. Uh, the other thing that we use is something called a 10 frame, which almost looks like a bingo board with 10 empty slots, and then we fill it. You can see uh, to represent different numbers, and what that does is it gives children um, a better way for number sense and how they can visualize the numbers more easily. So like the bottom one, you can clearly see two dots. Um, you know, the other 10 frame has seven. So we use that a lot, and I feel that the children are learning um, – in a lot of ways by games and fun, but they're really learning math and getting a better, better sense. Uh, I'm going to turn over the next slide to Mrs. Barker, who's gonna talk about science. Hi, I'm Mrs. Barker, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about science. Science is a subject area where the children love to explore and investigate and problem solve and a lot of critical thinking. We do this in various ways. Um, experiments, hands-on activities, and also, like Mrs. Rilke mentioned, center time is a great opportunity for them to work in small groups and investigate at a science center. On the slide ahead of you, we have just a few of our science units I'll touch upon. The first one is our life cycle of an apple. We start that in September, and the children will learn about the life cycle through nonfiction text, shared readings. They'll learn new vocabulary words like core and stem and labeled parts of an apple. Uh, there's a picture right on that slide. There are two children 
uh, dissecting an apple and looking at the seeds and, and discovering new things there. So the children are learning on, in, on many various levels on the, the life cycle of an apple. And we will continue that life cycle in October as well with the pumpkin. And the children will again be exposed to shared readings and poetry, nonfiction texts, and also label pumpkins and experiment with pumpkins. And even have a chance to go to the Fifth Avenue School uh, pumpkin patch and get their very own pumpkin, which they really enjoy as a culminating activity. Uh, we continue on with our weather uh, unit. The children love that. It's what we talk about this, the seasons and forecasts and why the weather changes and really use that thinking. Um, and the children love to write about the weather, what they see. Uh, moving on to penguins and groundhogs later in the winter time, we continue with that unit as well. Butterflies is always a special topic for the children. They just love, love getting the science kits. We purchase uh, the butterfly kits for the children, live butterfly kits. And we start with the life cycle as well. And the children get to observe and watch the transformation right in front of the butterfly garden. They, they put their recordings in an observation journal and they just enjoy that, that time of the year. It's always a fun time. We continue on with our plant unit. They learn about living things, parts of a plant, what makes a plant grow. And they get to even experiment with different types of seeds and different types of environments and what makes a seed grow and what do you need in order for that to happen. At the end of the year, we close off with the under the sea unit where the children learn about sea life. And th there were so many other units that we discuss and touch upon. And also what's really important, um, we have our STEAM, which stands for our science, technology, engineering, arts and math. And it's really important for the children. It's the way of the future. And right now this year in, in all of our kindergarten classes, we have a picture on the slide of some children working with a bee bot, which is a robot. And believe it or not, they are actually programming that robot. They're learning about coding. They're programming the robot to maneuver and make moves to spell their names, the letters of their names. And they're learning about the, making those commands and to program that robot to do what is necessary for that lesson. And that could be done with the life cycle of the butterfly and also making star words, sight words. So there's so much you can that can be done with our STEAM activities. And we will continue those STEAM activities next year along with many new things in our science curriculum. And I'd like to send it over to Mrs. Davenport to talk about social studies. Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Davenport. So for our social studies units, um, you can take a look at the topics, some of the topics that we cover. Um, we go over a wide variety of holidays, multicultural celebrations, community helpers, how to be a good citizen, and no matter what our unit is that we're studying, it's really integrated throughout the entire curriculum. So we're doing interactive read-alouds about the subject, we're doing shared reading, shared writing, interactive writing, art projects, it's incorporated into our center time, so it's really all-encompassing. Um, and you can see some of the pictures. Um, there's a Veterans Day project where you can see the craft. Um, you can see there's interactive writing there. Um, you can see Election Day pictures as well. So no matter what it is, we're um, exploring it in a way that's developmentally appropriate for these kiddos. Um, and there is a particular focus on the community and being a good citizen. And for that, we have a really great program that we use called Sanford Harmony. Um, which you'll see on this slide. Um, it's a new district-wide initiative that we started this year. And beyond just being district-wide, it's also just integrated throughout the entire building, meaning you know, we as classroom teachers are not the only ones teaching the children this. So when the kids are going to music class, art class, gym class, they're getting these social emotional lessons. Um, so some of the components um, of Sanford Harmony are a buddy up system where the kids are paired up with different children every week, which gives them a chance to really get to know every member of their class, as opposed to just sticking with the same friends that they know all the time. We have a meetup um, system where, which is a whole, whole class, like fun activity, conversation cards, which is getting to know each other better. There's a fun story when we do these lessons. You can see in the top right corner that little green guy, his name is Z, and the kids really love those stories. They really connect to them and can relate to them. 
And of course, there's a homeschool connection where we will keep you informed of what we're learning about and give you tips for how you can continue those conversations at home as well. Um, so just to give you an idea of what we cover, we talk about diversity and inclusion, empathy and critical thinking, communication skills, problem solving skills, and peer relationships. Um, so I'll turn it over now to Senora Oropesa and she'll talk to you about what to do to get ready for kindergarten. Hi everyone, you're probably wondering, what can I do to help my child get ready for kindergarten? Here are some things you can do at home to help your child get ready for September. First, have your child practice writing his or her name using uppercase letter for the first letter and lowercase letters for the rest. Uh, read to your child every day. Encourage your child to write up just about anything. This could be writing the letters, writing uh, mom and dad, maybe some sight words such as I, am, uh, like. Also, you can practice cutting and gluing practice coloring in the lines, visit the library and visit the uh, district website. Here you will find tons of uh, different activities you can practice with your child this summer. In the next slide, you will find the alphabet linking chart. This chart is what we use daily in our morning meetings and to learn about just all the letters and the sounds. Uh, the picture you see will actually help your child uh, remember and recognize the letter and the sounds. You can use this chart with your child at home to reinforce learning about letters and sounds. And using magnetic letters will help this activity make it more fun. Now, I would like to uh, hand it over to Ms. Mott. She will talk to you about more things you can do at home to help your child get ready for September. Hi friends, I'm Mrs. Ma. I'm so excited to see all of you in September. So here are some things that you can do over the summer to get ready to come to kindergarten. First, you could practice tying your shoelaces. These uh, movements of the um, small motor uh, skills will help with everything else like cutting and coloring and holding a pencil, which will come in really handy. So tying shoelaces is important. To bring coats and pants, how to use the bathroom, which includes keeping the door closed and not leaving it open, which I find happens a lot. So that's an important thing. How to properly cover a cough and a sneeze, which is spoken about so many times over this time. How to wash your hands correctly. I think we're all pretty good at that, but just reinforcing to sing the alphabet or sing happy birthday while we're washing our hands and making sure that we're getting all those parts, especially the thumbs. Um, have to respect personal space. You know, that's your backpack and that's Tommy's backpack and we shouldn't be going in each other's backpack or, you know, too close or taking things off of somebody's desk. Also, how to solve problems without tears, how to use our words, which is really an important skill because we are here at Fifth Avenue ready every single day to help your children, but if, we, if they don't use their words and tell us what's wrong, it makes it a difficult chore to help them. So you know, teaching them how to use the right words in what's bothering them to help our job be a little easier. So I hope that helped and um, can't wait to see all of you guys. I'm gonna pass it over to Mrs. Cope now to close that up. Actually, we're gonna send it over to Mrs. Tahaga who's gonna tell us a little bit about Google Classroom and our distance learning plan. Hello everyone. Well, we are so excited to see you in September. We can't wait to have you in our building. We are also prepared for distance learning if we shall need to use it. So if we have to use distance learning, each kindergarten teacher will set up a Google Classroom and your child would get his or her individual email address, which is what they will use to access the Google Classroom. Let's take a look to see what the inside of a Google Classroom looks like. So once you go into the Google Classroom, it will look like this. You have the option to see it as a stream, just like this, or you have the option to see it as classwork, where it, give, it gives you dates and uh, the assignments that are due. In the Google Classroom, the teacher will post assignments, add some links, um, have activities that the students can do. So this is what the Google Classroom would look like. If we were to use it, we are prepared to give you more information about it. 
Uh, but we are so excited to have you back here in uh, September and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Please be on the lookout for a form that you will get where we would ask you for some feedback and maybe some questions that you may have for us that we can um, answer for you. Okay, and very quickly, we just have some contact information for you. And again, this entire presentation will be made available to you on the district website. Um, if you have any questions about anything you heard in the presentation, you can email me, Mrs. Tejada, um, or any of the staff members. And we would love for you to start following us on Facebook and Twitter so that you can get updates every single day about what's happening at Fifth Avenue School. I'm going to stop presenting and recording at this time and then we can take a few questions and answers hey mrs tahana would you like to share with us one of the first questions that we have yes so uh one question uh, that came in is if there is remote learning do they live teach daily so will teachers be live teaching if there is remote learning Okay, so if we are to return in September, um, the first thing that's most important for everybody to know is that we are waiting for guidance from Governor Cuomo. And whatever the governor decides in terms of returning to school, whether it be in September or be a little bit later, um, he's going to give us guidelines on exactly what that's going to look like if we are in school. If we are not in school, the district is putting together a phase three of our distance learning plan. Since we've been home this year, we've had phase one, which was the initial uh, quarantine period, phase two, which included um, a few other pieces to make the, the distance learning experience more robust and student-centered and developmentally appropriate. And phase three will continue to do the same. There's going to be a combination of synchronous and asynchronous, which means live and recorded um, sessions for teachers to have the opportunity to work with children. Um, so each school district on Long Island is putting together a plan that needs to be approved by the Board of Education and then approved by the governor. So once that plan has been approved, Proves, then we'll be able to share more specific details. Okay, Mrs. Scope, I think you covered this one, but uh, one question was, uh, with remote learning, how would that work for parents who work out of the home full time? Yes, so there being a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning, would provide anyone the opportunity to log into the Google Classroom system, which we just saw from Mrs. Lentini's sample, and all the assignments are posted there. So whether there's a, a live session, that live session is recorded and then shared on that Google Classroom for anybody to go back and view at any time. And of course, all of our video lessons are made available to you through Google Classroom so that parents and children at any time when it is convenient can go back in and view, and if necessary, review the lessons before completing the assignments. Okay. Um, are school supplies shared or for individual use? Okay, I'm going to let one of our kindergarten teachers share um, how uh, the supplies are negotiated in the classroom. When we send home um, the kindergarten letter, also enclosed is a supply list where are a list of supplies such as crayons, folders, marble notebooks that we ask if possible to send in. And during the first week of school. So they will have their own supplies, their own little case, labels, all their things are labeled for their own personal use. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Cheney. Um, is there any kindergarten entry assessment? Uh, some parents had appointments in March, which obviously were canceled, but uh, what would be the process then moving forward? Sure. So in all of Bayshore schools, we usually what we do is we provide students with the opportunity to come in um, in May-ish for a dial screening. As you know, because we were not in school, the dial screening was not able to be administered. The district is putting together plans of alternate scenarios of what we could possibly do. If we're able to return to school in, say, August, we would love to have people come in and have their children receive the dial screening in August. If we are not able to return to school, when we do return to school, we will be able to administer that screening, uh, which will give us uh, very helpful data for our children. Right now, if your child attended the UPK program, all of the data reported by your UPK teachers has been sent over to Fifth Avenue School. So we have all of the anecdotal information and scores from your children during their time in UPK. So that information is extremely helpful to us as we begin the school year if we do not have the dial screening. 
And uh, last but not least, a question, uh, Ms. Mrs. Cope, I'm sorry, not a question, but um, can we talk a little bit about our PFA and joining our wonderful PFA? Absolutely, and we actually are so fortunate to have our PFA president, Mrs. Alex, here with us today as well. So I want to share with you that our PFA is an incredible organization that we wholeheartedly encourage every single one of our parents to, uh, to join. So the PFA is a, it's a, a partnership with the parents, the faculty, and the community to work together to provide incredible opportunities for our children. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm a little biased, but I've worked in every single building in the district that our incredible PFA here at Fifth Avenue, they are over the moon for our teachers and our students. Since we have Melissa here, I'm actually gonna give her the opportunity to maybe share um, a little bit about some of the great things that we're doing with the PFA right now, if she's available. I didn't put my makeup on today. <laughs> um, my name is Melissa Alex. I have been the PFA president for the last three years. So next year will be my fourth year um, involved. I've had, I have a current first grader and I have an older child who went through and obviously my youngest is entering kindergarten. Um, so we do a ton of things throughout the year. Obviously, if the kids are in school next year, we have book fairs, we have holiday shops for the kids to buy president, uh, presents for their loved ones. We do a plant sale in May, um, art creations for them. We run picture day. Um, we pretty much have an event every, um, every month. And our goal is to raise money um, to give right back to the school. So we have offered teachers supplies through Scholastic Dollars. Um, we have purchased a swing set um, two years ago, which is a beautiful swing set that can hold six children on it. Um, and our main goal is just to make Fifth Avenue as beautiful as possible and as lively for our children and our community and to help our staff out in any way that they um, need possible. Um, we are hoping to raise enough money next year to buy a new big toy for the playground, um, since that is a, a focal point for the students. And obviously, with everything going on this year, we want them outside, we want them playing. Um, so when you start school in September, you'll get information from our PFA. Um, we have managed to go a little more digital because of the times, um, but usually it's sent home in the backpacks via folder. You'll have a flyer. Um, we have a $5 membership fee that literally goes right back to your children within the first month. They get pumpkins sent home. Um, we were able to give a book to a $5 book to every child last year at our first book fair. Um, we do, we give back to the kids uh, often. Um, so look for those flyers. If you want to join, I already had some, some people join um, during this meeting. We have our Fifth Avenue PFA page, which I know Mrs. Co posted, but it's um, it's Fifth, the word Fifth Avenue, and then a little um, like tilde um, PFA. So if you want to look um, for that on Facebook, you can certainly join us and see the fun things that Mrs. Cope has been doing with that page. Um, and we post a lot of information. Um, we have a Remind app that goes out. Um, and this year we were able to do our huge fundraiser virtually in May. Um, we had to cancel it in March and we were able to raise almost $12,000 doing it virtually thanks to the um, generosity of all of the community and parents and grandparents and people who were able to join that. Um, and it's just a fun way to get involved. It's a great way to be part of your children's experience at Fifth Avenue. So. Thank you, Mrs. Cope. Thank you, Mrs. Alex. I actually just added into the chat um, the handle for the Facebook page of the PFA. So it's there. If you welcome to copy and paste it right into your search bar on Facebook, and it'll bring you there. Um, I do see we have a couple of other quick questions, really, that pertain to September if we were to be returning to school. Um, again, I'm going to do my best to answer all of these questions for you, but I want to let you know that our guidance really does come from the governor. Whatever protocols he puts into place for cleaning, sanitation, um, and class sizes, those will come from the state and we absolutely will abide by them. I will tell you that Fifth Avenue School right now is cleaner than... Um, cleaner than any hospital, cleaner than my house, cleaner than anywhere else I've ever been. It has been sanitized from the ceiling to the floor multiple times, and no one has been in the building since uh, we have been home, aside from myself. Um, 
So in terms of there being cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, yes, we have hand sanitizer already available in every single classroom. Each teacher does have cleaning supplies available in the room. The desks are cleaned uh, daily by the teachers and our staff of course will use the appropriate uh, school approved materials to continue to clean and sanitize. Um, our kindergarten classes, um, in terms of the number of students per class, um, they do uh, fluctuate a little bit depending on the size of the cohort. We have five classes, um, well, six classes of kindergarten right now in Fifth Avenue School. We have four uh, regular classes, regular education classes. We have one dual language class. And if you were interested in dual language, you would have already um, been in contact with Mrs. Patricia Rogers and attended the parent interest survey and meeting for that program. And we do have one self-contained kindergarten class at Fifth Avenue. And that is the same number of classes we will continue to have in our building. One of the great things about Fifth Avenue is that it really is a small school and it feels like a family. We don't have any extra space. So all of our rooms are filled with happy, smiling children and incredible teachers. Um, I see one final question about remote learning. How will students be assessed? So um, again, within our distance learning plan, we're putting together uh, specific mechanisms for student assessment. And of course, that would include um, students completing assignments and turning them in through Google Classroom that teachers would be able to mark and rate. If they were using an online learning platform, like for example, iReady, which Mrs. Rilke mentioned for mathematics, or Raz Kids, which is a reading program, or Waterford, all of those uh, computer programs are where students are working and completing assignments. It grades those assignments and provides the feedback to both the parents and the teacher. So we have a great number of uh, assessments already built into our distance learning plan, and we'll just be continuing to tweak and hone those in our next phase of distance learning if we need it. Although I, by, I, I hope that we will be able to be back in the building all together very, very soon. Fifth Avenue is a very empty place without our smiling children there. We all miss them terribly. Um, computers, yes. So if we are in a distance learning situation, if a parent needs a computer to use in order to access distance learning, we will be able to give those out. This is not a one-to-one -one district initiative. It's for those who are who need an additional um, supportive device. We do have them in stock and ready to be provided to families who do need them. And again, if we are in that situation, all of these questions will be uh, delved into more deeply from a district perspective in August. So what we do at Fifth Avenue is what happens at Brook Avenue and what happens at Mary G so that we are consistent as a district with distribution of devices. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us for our very first virtual orientation. I hope this was helpful. Um, if we are able to come back in August, we'd love to have everybody come into the building if we are able to so that you can see the classrooms, you can see the cafeteria, see the gym, perhaps get on a bus if you're, if you're a bus rider. Um, but all that information will be forthcoming over the summer um, when it becomes available. Again, I'd like to thank all of the teachers who are here with us today and all of you for joining. And for all of my kindergartners, I see my incoming kindergartners with big smiles. We cannot wait to see you very, very soon. If you have any additional questions, please email us. Um, and again, the presentation that we had today will be available very, very soon. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone.